Hello everyone, welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm so happy to tell you that Topaz Gigapixel AI has a new update, a new uh, interface. It's really awesome. I'm going to show it to you today. One of my very favorite pieces of Topaz software. It's also on sale from $99.99 down to $79.99. And also, if you use my uh, affiliate link in the description below, just click on that and use my at checkout, use my coupon code David Kelly. You'll save an additional 15% off of that price. Now, it's on sale up until Monday, uh, April 13th. We're in the year 2020 right now, so if you're in that time frame, you can get this savings and get that extra 15% with my coupon code in the affiliate link. So, And if you do that, I appreciate that. I get a small commission. It helps me keep my YouTube channel going, and I would, if you do it, I want to thank you in advance. And, and also, you'd get 15% off any piece of Topaz software that you would purchase. Well, enough of that kind of stuff. I really love this product and all Topaz products. You know that I do a lot of Topaz videos and it's always my go-to software. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the new update of Gigapixel AI. Hey, if you're a Gigapixel AI owner, don't forget to download this latest version 4.5.0. There's a new interface here and I think you're really gonna like it. Let's go ahead and open up some images here. I'm going to click open and that'll open up my file browser here. Now I'm already uh, set up to this uh, folder right here. I have original images here. This first image is like really a crop down image from my Canon 5D camera. This is a little thumbnail. It's a little 750 by 750 thumbnail I made for social media. I'll show you how cool of an upsizing job I can do with this. And these other three are some uh, iPhone images. And iPhone images are really great for uh, Gigapixel because um, you can upsize them and get some really great prints off them, which is really cool. So it kind of revolutionizes the iPhone or any camera phone, actually, for that matter. So let me go ahead and select all these images right here and click Open. And you'll see what happens here. So this is the new interface. We have this nice big uh, viewing area here. And we see the original on the left and the uh, preview of the outcome on the right. And uh, down here are all the images right here. Now, when it's set here for select all, that means that uh, whatever you do to the first image, they're all going to be set the same. So if you if you have like did a photo shoot and they're all going to be the same size, kind of in the same, you know, you shot them around the same time, so you're not really needing to do too much to them. You could go ahead and just set, hit select all, uh, set up the parameters over here and go ahead and batch those out. But if you want to individually do them, all you have to do is uh, uncheck the select all. And now you'll see, uh, here's your images up here. Now just uh, click on the first image right here. And when you do, that image comes up right there. Okay, now we can independently adjust each and every one of these. But you'll notice on the left side here, it says size 16 by uh, 1634. This is the pixel dimensions by 1634, so it's a square uh, image. And right now, it's set for scale 2. So that's 2 times, and the size uh, bumps up to 3268 by 3268. And then over here, you'll notice we have uh, the different ratios that we can use. We can do 2 times, 4 times, 6 times, or you could set up your own uh, multiplication factor here. But I'm generally doing two, four, six. And the other cool thing is you can set up width. So you can do your width. You can uh, set it up by pixels. Or if you click here, you can set it up by inches. And this is really good if you're doing prints. So if you click on inches here, you can say, well, you know what? Like I have an Epson printer and my printer likes uh, PPI or pixels per inch of 360. So I'll just change this to like, say, 360. And uh, and now you notice my max width is 45. But you know I might say you know what I want to make a print that is uh, 24 inches uh, by 24 inches. So I'll type in 24, and I'm on inches here. And there we go. And let me go ahead and zoom to another area of the image right here. So I'm, now I'm zoomed in at 100%, and you can also see I can have different ratios. Like I could zoom in at 50%, 100%. Uh, 200 percent or 400 i generally leave this on 100 percent, but there you go right there so i'm a 24 inch print but if i said you know what i want that to be uh like maybe a 16 inch print i'll just type 16 
and now it'll resize itself for a 16 inch print so it's really cool i can tell it exactly the size of print i want to make so no guessing there it's really awesome and i have my pixels per inch of 360. okay so there you go for that one so so that one's set up at width and you'll notice right down here it says width and it says again the size over here 1634 by 1634 but now i'm set up to um i set that up for a 16 inch print which equates to a 5760 pixel by 5760 and the noise is set at 50 the blur set at 50 and i didn't come here and show you a couple other things here i showed you the uh your choice between scale or width and uh and we set it up for inches and the ppi of, of 360 but then you can this is a really cool feature if you have an image with faces in you could uh set this up for face refinement on or off if you have faces turn it on so it'll uh, interpolate your image a little bit differently which is really nice for faces which is a really great feature and then you can select the mode of the upsizing so you can do manual or auto i usually do auto and it works really well so i'll set it for auto now i set it for auto now if i come back and click on manual you'll see the settings it picked it uh, chose suppress noise of 20 and remove blur of 80 okay so i'm going to set it back to auto when i do you'll notice here it says uh width i set this up for width and i set it up for an auto uh, uh upsizing and then i can come to the next image here and click on it and this is me uh yours truly dave kelly okay so it was a 750 by, by 750 by 750 uh pixel image so very small image but right now it's set for 2x let's set it for uh 4x and i'll zoom up don't look at my ugly nose okay <laughs> but here we go look at that i don't have face refinement on but look look at the pixelation in here but look how clear and clean that is that is truly amazing so it went from a 750 by 750 to a 3000 by 3000 so pretty cool stuff right and let's turn uh face refinement on i don't know if you'll see anything here but it just looks, you know, it's not as maybe as crispy in certain areas on the uh, on the face, but the eyelashes and eyebrows are really nice and sharp, and the eye is really crystal clear, which is really a nice deal there. So let's go ahead and uh, set, uh, select the mode here for auto. So it's set for auto, and let's see what manual is. And manual, it set it for twenty and sixty, and so. You know, and I may say, well, I want a little more, a uh, little sharper. So I'll move the remove blur a little bit to the right there a little bit and say, okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave this one on manual. So the first one was auto. The second one's manual. Now we'll go on to our third image here. This is an iPhone image of a flower. And, okay, so here's the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is what it's going to look like after it's upscaled. And again, I can come to the left here and move this around. See the little hand tool comes up there. And then it'll uh, re-render uh, re out the preview for us right here. Or I could come up to this little square up here in the navigator and move this around to anywhere I want it to go as well. And of course, you have your choice. Again, you could set it up for scale, width, or height. Uh, let's set it up for... Uh, scale i'm going to put this one at say like 4x so the original was a 40 32 by 30 24 now it's at a 16 128 by a 12 0, 9, 6 pixel but look at the difference can you see the um pixelation in here but look over here how clear and clean and sharp that is now that's set for manual so let's click it on auto We'll let it render out again and now we'll go back to manual and see where it's at so it's at 20 and 80 this time so it did give this one more sharpness here so i like that i'm just going to leave it on manual and then we can go to our next image here all right our last two images here these are both iphone images uh just to save time i'm going to set this up for auto two times and you can see the job it's doing there and let's click on our last image here and this is another iPhone image of some flowers here. And it's set for two times. Let's see a little bit of the flower here. Now, right now, this is set for manual. So let's click on auto. 
And then here's our little tip here. If we click on manual after we click auto, we can see the settings it has chosen for us. And then we can come here and alter these. If I said I wanted a little bit sharper, I can just bump this remove blur up to the right. If I wanted less noise reduction, move it to the left. If I want more noise reduction, move the suppressed noise to the right. Okay. And again, we could come here and choose width or height. And here's a little tip. If you take this pixel dimension here, if you take the number of pixels per inch that you want your print to be, for instance, in my case, 360, if I take 6048 divided by 360, I'll know what size of a print that I can print. For instance, just to show you here. So uh, I know the, uh, the size here is um, 6048 by 8064. So if I take 8064, 8064, and divide that by 360, this would, that would amount to a 22.4 inch print from an iPhone image on the longest side. So that's pretty neat, right? Now when you're ready to print or to batch this out, all you have to do is click on Start Batch Processing right here. And you have a couple things you have to do. You have to choose the image format. Now, I'm going to use uh, Preserve Source Format right here. But if you click here, you can change it to any format you want, like JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. I'm going to leave it on Source. Uh, file name, uh, suffix. It gives it a suffix of uh, gigapixel. You can change that to anything you want, but I do like that. Add scaling mode to file name, yes. It'll tell you like what size you upsized it to, like was it a 2x or a 4x. That's a really cool feature. Save directory, it could either be the source directory or a custom directory. Now, if it's custom directory, you have to come here and click change and select the, the file browser opens up and you selected the, the directory you want it to go into. Mine's going into this up converted directory right here. And then you have a choice of color profile. So you can preserve the original source profile or you could change it to whatever you want. Pro Photo, sRGB, Adobe, and so on. I'm just going to leave it at the preserved source. And then all you have to do is click start and it starts to process out. Now I'm just going to fast forward this and I'll show you what the actual timings are when this is done. And here are the final results. Now the first two images were a little bit smaller files. Uh, the first one was a 5760 by 5760, it took 45 seconds. Second image, 3000 by 3000, that was my 750 by 750 uh, little um, uh, image of myself that I used for social media. It was like a little thumbnail I made, but I was able to upsize it to a 3000 by 3000. Uh, 11 seconds, the last three were iPhone images. The uh, first and the last were a uh, scale of four times, so 12096 by 16128 on these two images here. Uh, 333 on the first one, 331 on the last one, and the middle one was a two times, 8064 by 6048. It was roughly the same time as well, uh, three minutes and 34 seconds, so pretty quick. Now, I'm using an iMac uh, computer. It's a 2019 model with an i9 processor. I'm using 32 gigs of RAM and a Vega 48 graphics card. It's an 8 gigabyte uh, graphics card. And so, or GPU, 8 gigabytes GPU card. And so there's my results. Now, mileage will vary depending on computer. So, but these are my results and hopefully that gives you an idea. But it's pretty quick. But the nice thing about batching is you can set this up and walk away and just come back and everything is done. Topaz Gigapixel AI. What a great piece of software. I mean, I use it all the time on my images that I'm going to be printing out and I get fantastic results and I cannot recommend it enough. It is really fantastic. Um, also, right now it's on sale from $99.99 down to $79.99 until Monday, April 13th. But also, if you uh, in the description below, if you click on my affiliate link, and use my uh, coupon code of David Kelly, you'll save an additional 15% off of Gigapixel AI or any Topaz product for that matter. And I love Topaz and I do a lot of Topaz videos and I use it in just about every image, probably all the images I've ever edited, I've used Topaz in. And I've been using it probably for the past 12 years or more. Uh, I, I don't even remember how long it's been, but it's been a long time, I can guarantee you that. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. 
I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.